Okay, Mr. Jackson, thank you. Could I ask you to take your top things off for me and pop yourself on the couch? Yes, that would sure. be great. <coughs> you don't need to take your shoes off, we've got some paper right. there. As Mr. Jackson is taking his clothes off, I'm looking for signs of breathlessness, um, discomfort, uh, and any evidence of poor mobility. Thank you. If you just pop yourself up here. That's great. That's Are you all right? right? Yep. Yeah. Are you comfortable? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Jackson's exposed at uh, 45 degrees. The whole of his chest is exposed. Um, for women, one often doesn't need to take the bra off unless one's worried about breast pathology or has difficulty accessing the chest. I'm just going to observe Mr. Jackson and, and count his respiratory rate for 30 seconds. I'm also making general observations about his general condition. I also inspect for cyanosis or pink discoloration, use of accessory muscles or audible noises such as wheezing. For inpatients, I also note items around the bed such as oxygen, chest drains, sputum pots, inhalers, nebulizers, and I always inspect the observation charts. Okay, Mr. Jackson, I'm just going to check your hands if I may. Thank you. If you can just turn them over for me. Thank you. And here I'm checking for tar staining, peripheral cyanosis, clubbing, and I'm looking at nail bed fluctuation as this is said to be the first sign of clubbing. And I'm just going to check your pulse. I'm feeling the pulse for rate, rhythm and character. And if I suspect respiratory failure, and carbon dioxide retention, I check for a CO2 flap at this point. Mr. Jackson, could I just ask you to take your glasses off for a second for me, please, sir? <laughs> just gonna have a little look in the eyes. If you could just look up for me, just gonna pull the bottom of your eyelids down. And here I'm looking for pale conjunctiva suggestive of anemia. Thank you, sir. You can pop your glasses back on now. Mr. Jackson, could I ask you to open your mouth for me, please? And pop your tongue right out. Thank you, and lift it right to the ceiling. That's great. Pop it in and close your mouth for me. And here I'm looking for signs of central cyanosis by inspecting the lips and the tongue. When examining the chest, I inspect, palpate, percuss and auscultate in sequence. I do the whole of the front of the chest and then do the whole of the back of the chest. I'm examining side to side, not top to bottom, to make the comparison. Mr. Jackson, could you take a big breath in and out of three mouth for me, please, sir? That's perfect. And I'm looking for symmetry of movement, any obvious chest wall abnormality, and any obvious scars on the chest. Do you have any pain at all, sir? No. Right. I'm just going to fill in your neck, sir. If you could just bear with me, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. I'm filling in the suprasternal notch, and I'm filling for the trachea, which should be central. That's great. Thank you. If you could rest your arms down for me, please, sir. Thank you. I'm just going to put my hands to the side. And again, a big breath in and out for me, please, sir. That's grand. So I'm gripping the side, and my thumbs are raised. And again, big breath in and out. Thank you. I can do this in more than one place, and I'm looking for a movement of at least two centimetres. For percussion, I percuss over the clavicles and over the anterior chest wall, comparing like with like. The power comes from my wrist and my fingers are together. Could you just move your arms for me, please, sir? I also percuss in the axillae. It is important to note that each area of the chest wall correlates with different areas of the lungs in percussion and auscultation. The anterior wall examines the upper lobes, the posterior wall the lower lobes, the right lateral wall the middle lobe, and the left lateral wall the lingula.
On auscultating the front of the chest, I start in the supraclavicular fossa with the bell. Slow deep breaths in and out through your mouth for me, please, Mr. Jackson. And I'll use the diaphragm for the rest of the front of the chest. One needs to be aware that for some patients with breathing problems, many deep breaths will cause distress for the patient. And for some patients that are particularly hairy, one may need to use the bell throughout. If I could just ask you to move your arms, please, sir. And as with percussion, one needs to listen in the axillary. Again, slow breaths in out, please, sir. And last one. Perfect, that's clear. And now I move on to examining the back of the chest and I start with the lymph nodes. Would it be possible for you to sit forward for me, please, Mr. Jackson? Thank you. Do you have any pain in your neck at all, sir? No. I'm just gonna feel in the top of your neck. Bear with me, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. I'll start with the supraclavicular nodes. Could you just lift your chin up for me a fraction? Thank you. The anterior triangle submandibular glands, posterior auricular, occipital, and finally the posterior triangle. When examining the back of the chest, I inspect, palpate, percuss, and auscultate in the same sequence as I do at the front of the chest. On inspection, I'm again looking specifically for scars and for any obvious chest wall deformity or asymmetry. Could you take a big breath in and out, please, for me, Mr. Jackson? Do you have any pain in your back, sir? No. I'm just going to grip the sides of your chest again. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm looking at expansion. Big breath in and out, sir. Thank you. And I can again do this higher up. If I have difficulties getting round to the back of the chest, then I can reverse my hands and grip from above. Big breath in and out, sir. That's perfect. This obviously is much more difficult to do at the top of the chest. For percussion, I start at the top and again compare like with like. I'm percussing medial to the scapula and then fanning out as I go more basally. And on auscultating the back of the chest, I start at the top like the front of the chest, comparing side to side. Slow big breaths in and out, please, Mr. Jackson. And as with percussion, I move downwards medial to the scapula. The lungs extend over a greater area on the back and I always pay particular attention to the bases. Thank you. If I hear any abnormal sounds, I can use further tests such as vocal resonance. Could you say 99, Mr. Jackson? 99, 99. And I compare like with like. 99, 99. Could you whisper 99, please? 99, 99. And that would be whispering pectoriloquy. It is important to note that in clinical settings, the respiratory system should not be examined alone, but in conjunction with a cardiovascular examination, including looking for peripheral edema. Bedside tests can also be performed such as temperature and peak flow.